Okay, so here it says the function f is differentiable on the closed interval negative 6 to 5 and satisfies f of negative 2 equals 7. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, so this is f prime, consists of a semicircle and three line segments as shown in the figure above. All right, so first we need f of negative 6 and f of 5. If we're given a graph of f prime and we want f, right, that's just the integral or the area, right, underneath the graph of f prime. So the way we do it is, this is sort of like the starting point, right, like the initial point. You're going to start from negative 2 and then go to the final point. So for instance, if we want f of negative 6, I start with f of negative 2, that was the initial point, right? And then I do plus the integral. Now, I have to do the integral from this point, negative 2, to what I'm trying to find, which is negative 6, okay? And it'll be f prime of x dx underneath, okay? But then you notice, right, that the integral is in the wrong order, so you have to fix it. So it's f of negative 2 minus negative 6 to negative 2, f prime of x dx. Okay, f of negative 2, we're told is 7, minus, now I need the area from negative 6 all the way to negative 2, right, and that's just this. So that's 4. So 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. And then I want f of 5. f of 5, same exact thing. You start with the initial point, negative 2, and then you have to integrate from that point to your final point, 5, f prime of x dx. So that's 7. Okay, so the integral from negative 2 to 5, which is here, this one here is half pi times 4, and then this one is half times 2 times 3. So it's 7 minus 2 pi plus 3, 10 minus 2 pi. It is plus the integral, but since the semicircle is underneath, oh, okay. it's negative. Yeah. Okay. On what intervals is f increasing? Okay, so f increasing means f prime has to be positive, right? So, um, and where is f prime positive? So you say... Um, f prime of x is greater than 0 on, um, it's above the x-axis from x equals negative 6 to x equals negative 2, and from 2 to 5, right? Well, actually, negative 6 is included here. So these are the points where f prime of x is positive, right? You can't include negative 2 because at negative 2, f prime isn't positive, it's 0. But if f prime of x is positive on this integral, I mean interval, therefore, f of x is increasing from negative 6 to negative 2 inclusive and 2 to 5 included. Do you have to write that? Yeah, um, you have to write both, yeah, for full credit. Okay, the absolute, find the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval negative 6 to 5. Okay, absolute minimum on a closed interval, those two together mean EVT. So for extreme value theorem, what do you need? You need the points where f prime of x equals to 0, and then you need to plug them in um, at the boundaries and the critical points. So first, 
f prime of x equals 0 at x equals 2, negative 2, and 5. Right? So these are critical points. But then 5 is also a boundary point. So then here is where the extreme value theorem comes up comes up you have to evaluate f of x right because we want the absolute value of f you want to evaluate f of x at the critical points and at the boundaries so negative six and five and five serves as both but it doesn't matter right it doesn't make a difference okay a lot of these we already found. F of negative 6, we found it in part A, is 3. Um, F of negative 2, it's given to us, is 7. Oh, wait a minute. This first one, this was F of negative 6 here. And we also found F of 5 before. It was 10 minus 2 pi. And then f of 2, that's the only one we have to find. So it's 7 plus the integral from negative 2 to 2, f prime of x dx. So it's 7 minus 2 pi. So that's f of 2. Yeah, that's f of 2. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the absolute minimum, right? And so if it asks you for the absolute minimum value, what they really want is the 7 minus 2 pi. The way I would do it is I would say absolute minimum value is, and then I just write the whole thing, f of 2 equals 7 minus 2 pi. Okay? That way you haven't left anything out. Okay, part D. For each f double prime of negative 5 and f double prime of three, 3, find the value or explain why it does not exist. So, f double prime of negative 5, what is that? That's the slope of the graph, right? It's, so, um, this is the slope of the graph. And at negative 5, it's just the slope. Um, a linear equation so you just do y2 minus y1 so 2 minus 0 over negative 6 minus negative 2 negative half and then I want f double prime of 3 well where is 3 1 2 3 here okay well the slope there does not exist, right? Because, like, the derivative there doesn't exist because the slope changes on the left and the right. But you have to show it, like, methodically. So here's what we say. So um, let me erase that. You have to show that in order to say it, it doesn't exist, you have to show it. So you have to show that using limits, right? Um, so you have to do the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side. And what's the definition of a limit? Remember, it's f of x. I'm sorry, it's f prime of x minus f prime of a over x minus a. Right? Do you remember? So like the limit evaluated at a point, it, uh, I'm sorry, the derivative at a point is the limit f of x minus f of a over x minus a. In this case, the function is f prime, so that's how we write it. Um, so this one, it's, uh, what is the slope there? It's 2. Okay, you, you can just inspect the slope, and it's 2. For the other one, the limit as x approaches 3 from the positive side, 
of f prime of x minus f of 3, f prime of 3 over x minus 3. Do we need to write that? Yeah. Like yeah. That's negative 1. So you say the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side of f double prime of x is not equal to the limit of this from the positive side. Therefore, f double prime of 3 does not exist. Okay, so this is the explain why it does not exist part. All right. This problem kind of threw students for a loop that year. Um, so let's take a look. At time t equals zero, a boiled potato is taken from a pot on a stove and left to cool in a kitchen. The internal temperature of the potato is 91 degrees Celsius at time t equals zero. And the internal temperature of the potato is greater than 27 for all time t greater than zero. So the temperature never goes under 27 degrees. The internal temperature of the potato can be modeled by the function h and satisfies this differential equation where h of t is measured in degrees Celsius and h of 0 is equal to 91. So that is what this piece of information had said. h of 0 is equal to 91. And what the other highlighted portion was saying is that h of t is always greater than 27, no matter what time, OK? And then dh, we don't know what h is, but we know dh dt is 1 over 4, h minus 27, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So first, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of h at t equals 0. Use this to approximate the internal temperature of the potato at 3, at t equals 3. Okay, so basically what we want is like h of 3. Okay. But first we want an equation for the line tangent to it. Okay. That means we need a derivative, right? A slope. Okay, so um, at t equals 0. All right, well, we need the slope of h at t equals 0. Well, we have dh dt. So h prime of 0, right? You plug 0 into dh dt, and it's negative 1 over 4, 0 minus 27. I'm sorry, no, no. Ugh, I keep doing that. H, um, so h prime of 0 is negative 1 over 4 h at 0, which is 91, minus 27, and that is negative 16. Okay? And you don't have a calculator for this? No calculator for this. So now y, right? So now we need y minus y minus y1, right? y minus 91, right? That's the value, is equal to m negative 16 x minus 0. So y is negative 16, well, not x, t. Negative 16 t plus 91. That means y of 3 is equal to negative 16 times 3 plus 91, and that's 43 degrees Celsius. Okay. So now it says use d squared h dt squared to determine whether your answer in part A is an underestimate or an overestimate of the internal temperature. Okay, so what I did was find the tangent to H, right? So suppose H looked like this, okay? And if I had a tangent here, 
then it would be an underestimate, right? Because it would always be under the curve. But if H looked like this, oh, you know what? So let's let's do it more realistic because H is technically decreasing, right? Well, suppose it was decreasing like this and I have the tangent there, it's an under approximation. But suppose it was decreasing the other way, like this. And now I have the tangent line, then it's an over approximation. So we see that it really depends on concavity. So if H is concave up, it's under and so on. So let's find d squared H dt squared and keep in mind what the concavity is gonna be. Okay, so d squared H, dt squared is going to be the derivative of this so it'll be negative 1 over 4 dh dt okay but that is negative 1 over 4 and what's dh dt it's that whole function so times negative 1 over 4 h minus 27 or you just get negative 1 over 4, isn't it negative 1 over 4 times h minus 27? Yes, so d squared h dt squared is negative 1 over 4 times dh dt, right? Well, where, are you, where are you getting the negative 1 over 4? Oh, I'm taking the derivative of this, oh. right? Because that's dh dt. And if I take a derivative of that, then I get, if I take a derivative of that, then I get negative 1 over 4 dh dt. But then dh dt is that function, so I plug it back in, so now I get negative 1 over 4 times that dh dt here. Um, so when I simplify this, d squared h dt squared is positive 1 over 4 h minus 27. What I need though is to figure out whether d squared h dt squared is it positive or negative. Well for that look they kind of buried this. It says that h is always greater than 27 no matter what time it is that means this is always greater than 27 that means the whole thing is always going to be positive right so d squared h dt squared is positive greater than zero therefore since h of t is concave up Yep, it's an underestimate. Oh, it's one sixteenth, sorry. Okay. But positive one sixteenth. Okay. So now for T is less than ten. An alternate model for the internal temperature of the potato is the function g that satisfies this equation. They're just liberally tossing equations out. Where g is measured in degrees Celsius and g of zero is 91 again, okay? It has to be 91 again because it's the same temperature, right? Find an expression for g of t. Based on this model, what is the internal temperature at t equals three? Okay, so if you have this and you want g, you have to do separation of variables. So if dg dt is negative g minus 27 to the two-thirds, then um, bringing that over, right, you, you divide by that, right, so you get negative 1 over blah, blah, blah to the 2 thirds. It's negative g minus 27 to the negative 2 thirds. dg is equal to dt. 
okay? Because we divided by this, the exponent became negative. So now, integrate, integrate. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to leave the negative on the other side. You guys mind? I'm just going to put the negative here. So here, when I integrate this, I get g minus 27. And then if you add 1, you get to the power of 1 third. Divide by the exponent, you get 3. Equal to negative t plus c. Okay, let's put the initial condition, which is this. So when t is 0, g is 91. So 3 times 91 minus 27 to the 1 third is equal to 0 plus c. c is 3 times 91 minus 27 is 64 to the 1 third. So what is that? 12. All right, now that I have C, I can plug it back in here. And I get 3 times G minus 27 to the 1 third is equal to negative T plus 12. Okay, but remember how we need to solve for G? You really need to solve for G completely. So let's divide. By 3, g minus 27 to the 1 third is negative t plus 12 over 3. Take a cube root, g minus 27 is negative t plus 12 over 3 in a cube root. So that means g of t Take the 27 over, it's 27 plus cube root, negative t plus 12, over 3. Okay? And then I want the temperature of the potato at t equals 3. So remember how before in part A, in part B, we est no, it wasn't in part A, we estimated right, that it was 43 degrees using the um, tangent, and then we said that was an underestimate, right, so we expect for our answer to be greater than 43. So if I put in 3 here, g of 3 is 27 plus cube root of 12 minus 3, what is that, 9 over 3, so 3, um, oh, why do I have a cube root here? I should not have had a cube root, right? Oh my goodness. Oh my God. You see how this is a cube root? I should have had a to the power of three. Yeah? Oh my. So this should have been power of three power of 3, so 27 plus 3 to the power of 3 is 27, so g of 3 is 54 degrees Celsius, right? And that makes sense because in part A and B we said you get 43 with the tangent line, but that's an underestimate in reality, it was supposed to be 54. Okay.